All right, good morning, folks. We're going to give a little tutorial on how to access your AbD Visitor Management System through the computer via gateaccess.net. You will be sent uh, a username and a PIN to get started and some instructions via a PDF file on how to log in to gateaccess.net to set up your own visitor management. So we're going to do that on the computer right now. Um, we're already on gateaccess.net. There's a community code menu. It's a pull-down menu. And in your little um, guide, you were given uh, some information about HAC, Heritage at Cadence, being your community code. So I've put that in there. Your username was a phone number that was sent to you uh, by TMT. It's probably the primary phone number that you listed on your contact info. Now I've changed mine, so I'm going to log in with my current username. And the password you were given was a four digit code, 1234. It wasn't that, but it was something like that. I'm going to put in my own password here. And this is suggested after you've logged in the first time that you do go over here to login information and change your username to something that you'll easily remember and change your uh, password also to something a little bit more secure than four digits. Now, it's not required that you do it, but it is highly recommended because when you go over here after you're looking at all these tabs, Oh, and you say, well, you know what? That primary phone number that they sent me, that used to be my phone number in California. I changed it or I have a better one here or a cell phone that I like to use. And I'm going to put that as my primary phone number. And when you enter that data in, you have automatically and inadvertently changed your username because it was attached to your primary phone number. So my recommendation is go in and change your username yourself and then you'll know exactly what it is and you can update then this contact information to anything that you think is appropriate including another cell phone holder, a secondary cell phone number, even an alternate phone number. So on our page we actually have um, three phone numbers listed. As you go across the uh, tabs, I would go to every one just to see what they show you and how to enter in information. So the next tab is guest list. I've entered in um, three people on my guest list and uh, they're permanent guests. When you want to add a guest, so it says add a new guest, you simply press on that, you fill in their name, right? And you put the dates that you want them there if you don't want them to be permanent. So I'm entering in Joe here and this is obviously a not really a actual guest, it's just one that I'm showing you how to enter in. And so what I did was I just entered in a name of a guest and they're gonna get to come in today and end tomorrow. So I could also check whether they're a vendor or not and that's as simple as it gets. When you log this in, there isn't any save or anything you need to do, it simply is added into your list. So I'm going to delete uh, Joe because he's not really a person. And they're gone. And as you can see, if there's no end date listed, the system and the guards will understand that as a permanent guest. I would highly recommend you do those permanent guests um, initially because that's all your friends and family or caregivers and others. The entry log is uh, something that you don't really have access to in terms of entering data. It simply is the number of people who have come in um, under your visitor management system. So the guards are updating this and it shows you what people have come in. Emergency contacts tab, again, put somebody that really is your local emergency contact or someone that you would want the guards to contact in the event that you weren't available. A vacation notice, I happened to put that one in just to see how it worked previously. I know I'm expected to go somewhere in May and I entered in a 
a vacation date, that simply alerts the guards to something's askew if you're on vacation and someone else is trying to enter during those dates. Now, they may be an authorized a guest and they may be allowed to be going to your home and you want them there, but at least it'll alert the guards that you really are gone. So if, maybe if they're delivering some dog food for all us pet owners, maybe, maybe it shouldn't be delivered while you're on vacation. Your vehicles, uh, these, again, you really cannot alter them, but what you want to do is go in and check and make sure these are your vehicles and the information about them is correct. So their make, their model, their color, their year, the license plate number, this was all on our RFID uh, tag um, spreadsheets when we got those RFID tags. If you have an issue with it, please email TMT. Uh, Jane Cox will actually be the one physically doing the work, I think. But if you email TMT, they'll update this information, especially if you know something's incorrect, like a license plate or a uh, device number is your RFID tag number. Most people wouldn't know what that is. Information where we talked about earlier, this really is something that you should do on your first entry into the program. And if not, certainly the next time you go in after you've decided really what username I want and what password I want, and it gives you information about what is uh, an adequate username in terms of numbers of characters and the same thing for a password. So obviously the password field, when you change it, must be eight to 15 characters. And that's way more secure normally than a four digit pin. So that's why I would recommend you do that. Plus it's something you remember. The community documents folder really isn't available to us here, it's not one of the programs we have, so you won't see anything uh, under that tab. You go back to Overview, and there it is. It's the Heritage Cadence. It's your uh, login info, and you can log off up here in the top right corner. Obviously, you can just go back to your home page or something else if you don't want to log off, but I'll log off now, and it snaps right back to our login credentials on the website. So we're ready to start over again if in fact we needed to log back in. But I can't emphasize enough how you want to go into this and go across every tab, even if you're not going to enter information, just to get a look, see what that looks like. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about using the app. So I think that's it for the um, kdaccess.net login. Okay, so how to uh, get to gateaccess.net and log in on a computer. Now let's do it on a phone. This will be an Android phone and we'll demonstrate a couple of the easiest things to do. Go to the Play Store and go look for Gate Access. And there it is. And the icon sort of looks like a stop sign. So we'll select that. I already have it on my phone, but that's what it looks like. You would install it. So let's go to the phone and we'll go to gate access. There it is. So I'm going to uh, log in with my credentials already. It would be HAC, your username, your password, and this will be the information you changed on the computer or the original information sent to you by Jane. So doesn't matter which way it is, that's just the login. So now I've logged in and it has the Heritage Cadence logo and my address actually is in there. And now there's sort of a um, vertical list of all the tabs that were on the computer version. So I'm gonna to go to the first one, guest list, and it shows my guest list. You can even uh, select the expired ones to see who you had before in case there was any question. Um, add events and guests. Same thing, recent visitors is what's being logged in. My contact info, there's all my phone numbers and all the information that we saw on the web as well. Updating travel information, emergency contacts. Again, the uh, community documents part is not uh, available to us and so you wouldn't see anything selected there. It's 
simply uh, in a pictorial vertical fashion all the things that were on the computer screen. So it would be no different other than I would highly recommend that you get this on your phone because you'll then have access to it. If you forget you forgot to uh, if you forget that you forgot to log somebody in as a guest today and you're out, you know, shopping or whatever, you can go right to your phone and add that information so that there's no issues at the gate. Um, also, if you're out of town, you can use it to see who's come in under your visitor management. So if you had someone, uh, whether it be a housekeeper or a pet sitter or something, and you wanted to make sure they got in there, the entry log would show who's come in. So it has recent visitors, and sure enough, I have some people that have come, come by, and uh, that's a great way to check up on uh, the things that you think should be happening while you're gone. Okay, let's have a look and uh, see how to do this same thing on an iPhone. The iPhone is uh, very similar to the Android phone in getting to uh, gateaccess.net and logging in. So we're going to go to the App Store and we're going to look for uh, gateaccess.net and actually it probably is just under gate access so we'll type that in and it comes up as gateaccess.net and there we are abd gate access it's a utilities so we'll get that it'll download and then we'll be able to open it all right so now we're going to open gateaccess.net and um we'll as you see it says select an item on the community code so we're going to have to scroll down to get to um hac so There we are, Heritage Cadence. Once again, we'll log in. I'll type in my. And then the password. So there we are again. The page is nearly identical to what it was on Android. It shows us at Heritage Cadence and my address and the same list of. Um, folders in a vertical fashion with an icon. So once again, I'll go to the guest list and it shows my friends that are already listed there and to go to my contact info with all the correct information um, and everything else is, I would say, identical. So your iPhone looks just like an Android phone and it's very simple to use and um, very straightforward perhaps even easier on the phone than it is on the computer. So I'm gonna log out and now we're done. Okay, look at the camera and wrap it up. Okay, and finally folks, uh, up at the clubhouse in the business center, we have two Microsoft 10 operating system computers or workstations. And on those screens, you will see an icon for gate access. You simply double click on it and it will take you to the same gateaccess.net page that we demonstrated on the computer here. There's also a TMT portal uh, desktop icon if you need to get on that. And for those that need help, um, you can make a reservation through uh, TMT, the club, and probably Jane or one of the uh, staff will help you navigate on the computer to gateaccess.net. So for those that have reservations about how to do this themselves, uh, that's the easiest way to get it done up at the clubhouse. So thanks for your attention.